see where the Cape Crusader can go when he has a little bit extra O. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys, Batman, the classic TV series, Batman with the Oxygen Mask. How the debonair millionaire Bruce Wayne may seem like your average cool cat, but you'd be wrong. With the flip of a Shakespeare head bust and to the Batcave, Gotham City is filled with a rogues gallery of criminals eager to unmask the Batman, but they are thwarted by the Cape Crusader's own clever ways. I figured before we would look at Adam West Batman wearing a little more than just his cowl, I'd like to first thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of Batman wearing oxygen mask that we could have a look at in this review. First, though, let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. In this case, this time around, Batman is five and three quarters of an inch in height, or the figure is going to be about 14 and a half centimeters tall. As for, though, your figure comparison, we can bring in the original Adam West Batman so you can see the differences between the two figures. From a mold standpoint, the Cape Crusader are sharing the exact same molds to one another, complete with cowl. One thing, though, you can probably notice right away is not just the fact that Batman is having a breathing mask on the front of his mouth, but he also is colored a little bit more accurately to the way the original series had him. There were times, of course, that the cowl was a little darker here in the front. But not, I think, to the extreme that we had it with the original release figure. This version of Batman, while not having a breathing mask that can be removable, he at least has a little bit more of a closer color scheme the way he would have had in the original series. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. I didn't get around a chance to actually have a look at Robin. I did end up picking up the Robin, but for one reason or another, I just probably considered it was way too late to go back and have a look at this guy again. But here's also what he looks like with the Boy Wonder. Speaking, though, of the Boy Wonder, we will also be looking at a version of him that's part of this wave as well, where he will, like the Cape Crusader, also have a breathing mask that comes in clue with him as well. No wham, no bam, no thank you, ma'am. This time around, this version of Batman doesn't come in clear with the rather familiar word bubbles that came in clear with the earlier figures. These would have, again, just been molded in different colors of plastic, featuring, again, the onomatopoeia that would have blown up on screen as Batman was sucker punching some bad guy. He simply just clipped onto the wrists of the figures, whether you had this. I think this these may have been the ones that came in clear with Robin, speaking of which. But I'm kind of glad to see that they've slightly moved away from these as I part the screen. Fine and good that they include them, but I think unless you're going to be releasing, say, a goon pack, I would love to see them release a goon pack of the various goons, bad guys, the henchmen that came in clue with the main villains of that episode. Fine, yeah, to include things like this. But I think when it comes to Batman and a Robin figure moving forward, I'm glad to see that they're starting to include more accessories that he would have had in the series. And while maybe not as cool as a collapsible shield that Batman would have from time to time, whereabouts he would actually store that is still unknown. He actually kind of tucked it in between his utility belt and the back of his cape. But he does come with something that's rather cool still. He comes with a Batzooka. Excuse me? A Batzooka. Molded here all in black plastic. There are a few, of course, little touches of paint that are added here. Like, for example, just around the bat symbol on the front. They've painted the nozzle of the cannon here a very bright yellow. They've also carried over the same yellow spiraled across the top here with this red. Not really sure what the red actually is. For a second, it kind of looks like it should really be a missile. But it's probably just, again, something that's added to the top of the Batzooka. There is a little scope there on the top. But one touch of detail I like is that they actually took the time to, to paint as small as this may be, a little tiny bat symbol. It does fit into with Batman's hands, though not easy, just because, again, when it comes to these figures having a little more limitations when it comes to the articulation, you can't rotate, for example, the wrist inward, and with only just a single hinge at his disposal, you can kind of get, again, the handle, the front handle of the Batzooka, and do your best to kind of rest it onto his shoulder. But because the Batman doesn't actually have the means to bend his wrist, he only just barely, and it really doesn't even rest it where the Batzooka would normally rest onto a shoulder, but it's the closest thing you can get it. And it looks good. I don't know if necessarily I would have paired it, say, with this version of Batman. I'm sure I probably would have just included the Batzooka with another variation of Batman, but I'm glad to see that we actually got something outside of those onomatopoeia boxes. Let's go move those out of the way. Let's just move this out of the way and get a closer look at Batman. Now, this one doesn't have the means to remove the breathing mask, and technically it doesn't need it either. Seeing as we already did have this Batman released without a breathing mask, although the colors, let's just fix this cape here for a second, although the colors maybe aren't as close to the way the classic series would have depicted him, I'm glad to see at least we did get a regular version of Batman. But I gotta say, like, I do like this one a lot more, and I like it more so just by the way they've colored the cowl. The car cowl, truthfully, probably could be a little bit darker than what we actually get right here, but it isn't to the extreme of what we got here with the front masking of the black. 
Sometimes in episodes and even media shots, they actually would have had Batman with a slightly darker front section to his cowl, but I don't think it's as much as what we got right here with the original release. So I'm glad to see that we did get something a little bit more closer to the way the Cape Crusader would have looked in the classic series. Unfortunately, it does mean that with this figure, you get yourself a breathing mask here on the front that, again, isn't removable. It's molded here to the front mouthpiece of his, of his face, and you can't remove it. But it's fine. It still looks good. The eye is a little sloppy, I would say, on the one side here. It sort of looks like it's wandering off, and it's maybe been painted just a little off. But I'm glad to see that we did get ourselves a little more classic colors when it came to his cowl. You also get the chance to see, I think, his eyebrows a little bit nicer, too. And just to bring back in that original Batman, I think the blue... I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that the blue is against the backdrop of a different colored cowl, but it seems like the blue seems to stand out a little bit better than what we got with the original release. Other than that, though, it seems to be the exact same head sculpt. I can't imagine that they would have retooled anything new, simply would have just taken the existing Batman and just molded the front mouthpiece. Or they might have very well also molded this separately and then just glued it onto the face. Either way, you can't remove it. And even if you were to remove it, how awkward Batman's face would look. You probably would have a sunken in face. So yeah, definitely don't remove it. A little bit of extra silver gets afforded here. You got a little bit of extra yellow down below there as well. And the tubes that run from the oxygen tank all the way down to the, or to the breathing area. Really nice little touches. From that down, I mean, pretty much you're basically getting the same Batman as before. One correction still I feel they have to make is bringing the utility belt further up. Still has a gap where you can see like the top of his trunks are still shown. I kind of went back to look at the series and there may have been a couple of times where Batman was running around or fighting bad guys where maybe you saw a little bit of his trunks sticking up. But I would really have loved if they could have found the way to fix the utility belt and just make it a little higher than what it actually is. The emblem here on the front has been printed from at least what I can see doesn't have any real paint problems at all and nor are there any paint problems at all apparent here when it comes to utility belt there may be a little bit of areas of the yellow but mileage may vary of course i have a little bit on mine but it's not to say that everyone's going to have the problem in the paint in the same place that's a lot of peas from there of course down we've got basically a gray suit with blue boots blue trunks blue gloves stating again all the obvious things and he also does have again that soft material cape the cape is still the problem where it doesn't really fit or form to his body I've actually been tempted to the idea of actually just, not that I really want to glue these, but I, I've been very tempted to actually take a little bit of glue. You probably could take yourself a little bit of sticky tack, put it on the shoulders here on both the sides, and then sort of just kind of like pull it back a little bit and maybe just attach it that way. And that looks a little more fitted to Batman's body. I think you would still have the flow on the back of the cape. I have to kind of figure out all the mechanics, all the you know, all the things behind that, just to make sure that it doesn't look like awkward on the back of the cape. Because the, the cape itself is very square. So, of course, any little bit of changing that you do to the top of the cape may affect very well than the rest of it. But I'm going to figure out the logistics behind it. Uh, one thing also I noticed about this particular Batman, and it could just be the way it was assembled, is that you can't actually move his boots. I don't think it was necessarily the case before when we looked at this Batman, Maybe the boots were movable, but it seems to be the case where, like, the legs move a little bit more freer, as you can see. This is the newer Batman. This is the older Batman. This one doesn't move as well. Maybe I really even shouldn't be doing this, but it looks like he actually now has swiveling in his lower legs, whereas this one didn't have it before. So it looks like they may have made some changes when it comes to the body mold. But other than that, it looks just pretty much the exact same as we got before. Okay, so let's look at the articulation on this brand new Batman. Head like before, it's going to be on a ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. It's going to have the head look up. Wait, did you miss it for a second? I did do it. Head looks up only by that much. The head does look down only by... It doesn't even look like I'm really even nudging it. And you can also rock it back and forth as well. Shoulders come out at 90 degrees. In fact, you probably could even bring it back further, higher up than 90 degrees. So you can get about that far of a reach for Batman's arms. The arms rotate all the way around, but you're still going to have the problem because his torso is shaped essentially like a V. It's going to cause a little more problems when it comes again, those arms will rotate all the way around. You can do it, but you're going to be hitting resistance the whole time doing it. He does have a hinge in the elbow, once again, that allows the, the forearm to rotate back and forth. He doesn't have any articulation here in the glove, for example, nor does he have it. He has it here in the hand, but it only looks like it moderately swivels. And even then swiveling it, I feel like I'm putting stress against the joint. But it does seem like it can rotate it, but it just doesn't seem like it rotates very much at all. Uh, no waist swivel from what I can see. The legs still, again, only relegated to moving forward and back. You can't split them out. I really wish, if anything, these figures, right from day one, could have had swivel hinges right here at the tops of the legs. So you could actually get a wider stance for Batman. Again, he does have a single hinge in the knee. But this time around, though, it seems to be the case where you can actually rotate Batman's legs back and forth. Again, just to look at the original one. 
I don't think I could actually have moved it the same way I can move now these legs. So maybe they have made a few little changes and new allowances. Yeah, I mean, look look at that. Look how you can rotate the leg all the way around. I could never, could never do that with this other Batman. Oh, maybe I could. Oh, okay, I can. It's just really tight in this original figure. So they haven't changed anything in that department. Overall, though, nice looking Batman. May not be one that everyone's going to be picking up. Say a casual Cape Crusader collector. That's a lot of Cs. May not be necessarily in the market to pick up every single Batman that gets released. They may only be then really interested to get, say, this version of Batman. But, you know, again, I think the merits are here. The fact that, first of all, you get yourself a Batzooka, something that wasn't available in the original release. Let's, why is this guy not having an easy time to stand? The original release Batman would not have had that. Of course, the newer Batman also not only has the oxygen mask. Why am I suffering so much here? The newer Batman not only has now the breathing mask, but he also has, again, closer colors when it comes to his cowl. I'm doing a lot of multiple letters of the same anyways though i i do hope kind of following to this one that we get another version of batman that's closer to this guy but maybe closer to the color scheme that we get on the newer cal because again it looks more closer to the original classic series and i think if you were going to get one batman i would want one that has closer colors to this one than maybe the colors that we got with the original version of batman one minor correction I did want to make in this review. I did say that he wasn't able to move at the gloves of his of his forearms. And yet, sure enough, it was also tight, just like it was on the boots on the original Batman, with a little bit of, well, persuading. Persuading. I was able to gl get the glove to finally move. So Batman does actually have a swivel in his elbow. He has a swivel at his glove. And he also has a swivel in his wrist. The only thing, again, that these none of these figures have had the ability to possess is actually a hinge at the top of his thigh. So you're not actually still able to split Batman's legs. One overlooked articulation point that I think this line should have had right from day one. When it comes to certainly this release of Batman, as I already mentioned, I don't think everybody's going to get on board unless my, my logic is if you're collecting the Adam West classic Batman TV series figures and you're all in, then yes, this is a figure you'll be picking up right away. Not only does he have the benefit of the breathing mask, but he also has closer of a color scheme of his cowl to the way he looked in the classic series as well. So I think more of the casual collectors are probably just going to be interested in just getting the Batman, just getting the Robin, maybe a couple of the bad guy villains. But the ones that are really in this, like I am, for example, are probably going to be wanting to get this one as well. Just because, again, it's not simply just a Malibu Stacy situation. I guess it is and it isn't. He's not getting a Malibu Stacy hat. What he's getting instead is an Adam West breathing mask that does at least make him look different from the one that we got before. The question is, though, is it enough of a change that's still worth picking this guy up? You can let me know down below in the comment section. I mean, to keep in mind as well, he's not just getting a breathing mask. He's also getting a Batzooka, whether he actually has the means to wield it properly on his shoulder or not. Big thank you, though, to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new Batman Classic Series Oxygen Mask Batman that we had a chance to have a look in this review. Just an also FYI, even though I never got the chance to have a look at the Robin in a separate review, I will, though, be looking at the Oxygen Mask Burt Ward Robin. His review will be coming up shortly. To make sure, of course, you're not missing out on anything, first, if you enjoyed this video, throw it a like. But if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you don't want to miss out on anything new when it comes to Batman, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. And of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.